Um, this is the School Building Project Committee, um, Friday, June 19th, or Juneteenth, <laughs> which we're celebrating today, um, meeting to order. So we are going to do a roll call attendance. Uh, Ken Aries. Here. Here. Brian Baer. Here. Allison Borchers. Here. Chris Coleman. Here. Sarah Cronin. Here. I still don't see John Cummings. Okay. Um, Charlie Donahue. Here. Pam Dukeman. Here. Abby Hanscom. <coughs> yep, here. Can you stay here? I no. can't. I have no no audio. Oh, okay. I just need the verbal. I know. I, we, we, we can hear you. Abby. We, we hear, you. hear you. Oh, okay. I can't tell that. So, okay, I great. Thought, Good morning. Okay. I thought you were saying you had a sore throat or no, something. No, no. I can't <laughs> see any of my controls. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, we got you. Yeah. Um, Nancy Hyde. Here. Lema Jean Baptiste. Yeah. Am I supposed to sit here? Josepha Jowdy. Here. Carol Lewis. Here. Michelle Miller is not here today. Tony Mullen. Here. Emily Parks. Here. Amanda Phillips. Here. And Kate Scales. Here. Okay. All right. So I would like to recognize the live stream to provide real time public access to the activities of the school building committee, which is available online at www.westwood.k12.ma.us backslash live. The meeting is also being recorded for later broadcast on Westwood Media Center's platforms. And as always, we thank Westwood Media Center for their amazing partnership. Okay, so first order of business, exciting news. We have a membership update. Um, first, we, Amanda Phillips has joined the school committee and just this morning, 10 minutes ago, was appointed to the school building committee. Um, so we would like to welcome Amanda Phillips to our committee. Thank you. Oh. Yay. Um, and second, Josepha Jowdy has joined, I should say rejoined, <laughs> as a community member. So we would, uh, we are very grateful she has agreed to do this and we would like to welcome Josepha back to our <laughs> committee. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so we are getting into discussion items. So the main purpose of today's meeting, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take these two out of order. Um, the, the main purpose is to discuss the PSR and its submission to the MSBA. But first, I'm going to talk about this proposed geothermal test well uh, discussion item. Um, as you recall, uh, last week when we talked about sustainability options, we agreed that one of the options we would move forward was a geothermal heat source. Um, this is a, you know, fairly uh, a, a fossil fuel-free heating system that we'd like to explore in schematic design. Um, in order to do that, we need to begin the testing um, at this point, just doing one test well to see the feasibility of this heat source um, option. And we have attached to your, to your materials a proposal from McPhail Associates this is a proposal for $62,700. Um, it's actually broken up into two parts. The first part is, and let me just pull it up. Whoops. Um, the first piece is the work that we will do now, which is um, not 62,000. It's not the total. Sorry, I'm having all kinds of issues today. Um, it is, the first, it's forty-eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. So that is work we'll do today or moving forward, and um, pretty shortly. And then there's an additional thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars for engineering fees. Um, those will occur. Most of those will occur in schematic design. A small portion will occur now, but most of them will occur in the schematic design fee. So what we're looking for now is a vote by the SBC to approve. Um, uh, this this proposed geothermal test well um, process and we will we have one bid we're probably going to get another bid but at this point we are going if we approve it today we'll approve it with a not to exceed amount of sixty two thousand seven hundred dollars 
So if we get a second proposal, if it's higher than that, we'll go with the McPhail Associates proposal. Um, otherwise, you know, we'll decide between the two proposals which one we want. So that's the purpose of the geothermal test well discussion item, really just to approve a not to exceed amount of $62,700. I should note that we do have the funds in the budget for this. This is We have a fair amount of unallocated funds, um, and this is coming from those funds. So this is not an addition to our budget. It's just um, being allocated from the unallocated fund that we already have set up in our budget. So does anybody have any questions about this? Nope. What, what, um, Mayo, what was, or could someone comment what the general efficiency between uh, the geothermal and just the water source heat pump in general? I think we addressed that last time. Yeah, I, I can respond to that a little bit. Um, the geothermal system is a much more energy efficient uh, system than the water source heat pump. Um, we can get into the details on the specifics of you know, the exact level of efficiency in our future um, sustainability design meeting. Okay, any other questions? And um, with the design team, is this a strong recommendation the design team makes that we pursue this option and that this would be a much preferred solution? Yeah, the, uh, the benefits of going to a geothermal system include not only the energy efficiency aspect, but it's also a much lower maintenance, um, uh, a lot more fewer, uh, I'm sorry, much fewer moving parts um, and uh, pieces of mechanical equipment. Um, and um, so, you know, geothermal is, you know, the kind of standard that's out there right now. The water source heat pump um, is a newer system. Um, and, uh, and again, it requires more mechanical equipment uh, to do the job that the earth is doing essentially. And Rob, was, is air sourced heat pumps an option? This we looked, size. you know, we looked at uh, our engineer looked at the air source heat pump, um, but found that um, it was much less efficient than the water source heat pump, um, to the point where the supplemental electric boiler that would be needed um, would be oversized, um, and so it just just didn't make energy efficient sense to go that route. Okay. Sorry, could, could, Chin, could you weigh in on past experience with geothermal? Or so you... the um, the uh, one thing is is that there there are different ways of doing air source heat pump. It's just so sort uh, for clarification. Uh, and so I I don't know whether the two of you are talking about the same air source heat pump. That there are some air air source heat pump that will uh, allow you to uh, achieve close to the similar get be competitive with a geothermal style uh, system but then those systems tend to be um, would uh, basically the, the if you imagine um, unit ventilator except it's air source heat pump and then there will be a lot more parts and a lot more uh, units all over the building to maintain. And so there are schools that are using that system, but that does uh, present a much higher maintenance issue. And an air source heat pump has another issue, which is uh, uh, you are circulating refrigerant inside of the building. And when the refrigerant leak, at the moment that there's no easy way to detect that, and then that you would only know it when the efficiency of the system goes down. And, uh, there's not a good, we do not know long-term health impact of that, what that means. Uh, and so the system that is presented by uh, uh, Dorn Woodier is a, uh, for, for all the options are the delivery system is a displacement ventilation, which is the most effective system in terms of air, uh, delivering air and the, in terms of the, it has, it's, it's best in terms of removing airborne particle 
uh, in terms of uh, say, so somebody sneezes is that it, it, it is the most effective way of removing all the droplet that's in the room out of the, out of the room, out of the building. And so that is what uh, all the options that's on the table at the moment have that system in there. And then that might be part of the de deviation that uh, between the, uh, the, and then if you couple that with an air source heat pump, it is not, the efficiency is not as high as the, uh, the water source heat pump. And that's why Rob is, uh, the, the team there that did not pursue that after that. Okay. And if we do look into geothermal, Rob, and we go with that system, is that your, uh, is that another consultant to bring on board or is that the mechanical, your mechanical consultant? Engineering? So the, yeah, so the, um, Request for additional services that may I just reviewed uh, is for McPhail Associates, who would be a specialty um, consultant for the geothermal system. Um, so they are an additional consultant that would work hand in hand with uh, our mechanical engineer um, on the, uh, the life cycle cost analysis and the development of that design. And if we move forward with it into the the DD and CD phase and construction, they will. If we do move forward with geothermal wells, uh, they will be a consultant. Uh, most likely, will be the same consultant that does the uh, initial work uh, to con and then that will continue into the uh, into the rest of the project. And just to Brian, just to like, add, I mean, we're not looking to make that decision today. This is just about the test well to do the research around it. I mean, I know it's a big investment and, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to make that decision and not, um, you know, not be serious about entertaining it, but, you know, we're not making that decision today. Yeah, no, I understand. I was just looking for some clarification because there, there sounds like there's additional engineering expenses that'll come. But again, if it's a strong recommendation from the design team that we should pursue this, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's the only option that really brings our energy use intensity number significantly down. Um, and it is a preferred option in terms of um, annual maintenance. Well, um, it's, it's far superior than to the water source. Heat pump. I, I am in favor of it. I'm in favor of pursuing it. I should, you know, I'd leave it to others if people are willing to incur the expense. So. To and the best can, of my can, knowledge, yeah. Can you just speak a little bit to the budget and where the funds are coming from? Sure. Uh, so that uh, in the original budget, there are some uh, line item like a hundred fifty thousand dollars on committed uh, amount. Um, at the moment, we have a uh, we have un uh, we can we still have uh, uncommitted amount in pretty much every category, including the uh, the other category. And uh, if we do go forward with this, we're still somewhere around four hundred thousand dollars of um, committed amount um, around there. That I don't remember the exact dollar amount, but the uh, out of the one point uh, seven five million budget, uh, that uh, that's where we would stand right now in terms of the committed and uncommitted amount. Are there any other questions or discussion? Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna we're not gonna vote that quite yet. It's down under the action items, um, but um, I just want to you know we we needed to discuss it, so we did. <laughs> um, the second thing I wanted to talk about before we get to the PSR uh, last meeting, I had asked for uh, if anybody wanted to join the working group that would look at the design aesthetic of the of the building. Um, this again, these, this is not a decision making group. This is just merely um, a group that would kind of steer in one direction or another, but clearly with lots of updates and inputs to this larger group. Um, so a number of people have replied and uh, we I think we have a good group and just on this working group is going to be Allison Borchers, Brian Bayer, Josepha Jowdy, Kate Scales, Sarah Cronin and Ken Aries and I will be on the committee as well not committee, working group. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to give everyone an, an update on that. 
All right, and now we are getting into the PSR. So the preferred schematic report is our big report. This is the one we are submitting to the MSBA in July. Um, you all should have gotten a copy of it. It was attached to the agenda um, and had a chance to review it. And basically there's two major components to the PSR. The first is the recommended design option, which we, uh, so if we vote yes for the PSR today, that is a vote for the recommended design option. And the second, and this is again option seven, consolidating Hanlon and Deerfield at Hanlon into a new building for 560 students um, with the, what we're calling the tree design. And the second option, I mean, the second component is the not to exceed amount. Um, we talked about this last week. This is the amount we are telling the MSBA that the project will not go over. It is not the amount of the project. I cannot stress that enough. This is not how much the project is going to cost. Um, uh, the, the pro we don't know what, how much the project is going to cost, but we do know if we vote this PSR today, it will not cost more than $90.6 million, which is what the amount we came up with last week. Um, so I think, Rob, do we have a presentation on the PSR? Yep. yep. If you don't mind, Rob, I think I'm just going to run through it. Sure. If that's okay. But if you could, I, I don't I think you have the final version. So if you could pop it up on the screen, that would be helpful. Yep. So hopefully, if we've had our discussions right, most of this information should be uh, familiar and there shouldn't be surprises, but this is definitely the time we should be discussing anything, any thoughts, any comments that, that we have um, on the project, either the recommended design option, the not to exceed amount. Um, so this is it because this vote's coming at the end of this meeting. <laughs> uh, trying to, hold on a second. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so moving forward, everyone can see that, right? I can see it, so I'm assuming everyone else can. <laughs> All right, so the agenda is just to talk about the work that we've done during um, for the PSR, to just do a quick highlight of the option review process and the preferred solution. Um, and then I think it looks like it wants us, the agenda wants us to vote. <laughs> And then we'll talk about next steps, or at least discuss the vote. So, so what have we done during the PSR phase? Um, we created the evaluation matrix, which was the analysis that we used to run all seven shortlisted options. Um, and, I, and we presented that to the SBC, uh, I think a few weeks ago. We commissioned the Cropper GIS redistricting study. Um, actually, I should say the school commission, the school committee commissioned that, and the results of that were presented at school committee and also at a community forum. Um, we have had a number of sustainability me uh, subcommittee meetings and presentations to the larger group, um, and we've worked with the town, uh, particularly Tom Philbin, um, Eversource, Thornton Tomasetti, the Green Engineer, Land Partners, and all they've all worked with the sustainability subcommittee um, to present the op the options we talked about last week. We had a principal and educators review of all of the seven shortlisted options. I actually believe there were a number of reviews there. Um, we've done a fair amount of community outreach. We've, outreach. we've had three community meetings. We've had discussions with town planning, police, fire, building inspector, and we've also presented to the, um, that should read the select board, not the board of selectmen. Right. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> uh, and so that all leads us to the preferred schematic report. Quick reminder, this is where we started. These were the three categories of options we looked at and we wound up with the seven that you see below. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't think we need to go through these unless anybody wants me to, I think we're all familiar. Um, these were the seven, well, there's six options shown here that we shortlisted. The seventh is just the base repair, which was option number one. That's just bringing Hanlon up to code. It's not shown on this slide, um, but these were the six options. This was the evaluation criteria um, and the final matrix. And as uh, I think we went into this in a lot of detail at a couple meetings ago, um, but you can see there were five major categories. 
education, site, town impact, cost, and security, sustainability, construction impact. There were 14 subcategories all um, underneath those categories. And this was the final scoring with our color-coded greens. This was the recommendation of our redistricting consultants. Um, it was their recommendation that we the best option for redistricting was to consolidate Hanlon and Deerfield. And if you look at the slide, you can see really what they've just done is take that little, the line that separates Hanlon and Deerfield, that black line running through the middle of the red portion of the map. Um, that was the separation line between Hanlon and Deerfield. You basically just erase that line. Um, and that was certainly the 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 it seemed to be the most efficient the le least disruptive for all the reasons that are there um, that was the recommendation of the consulting re the redistricting consultants this was the options cost comparison um, again these are cost numbers for comparative purposes only just so we can see what they look like against each other um, and I think, you know, clearly the renovating Hanlon and that just bringing it to code was the cheapest. Interestingly, ad, um, the addition, the new Hanlon, I think that was the new Hanlon, correct? The new Hanlon, um, or was that this the is, ad reno? This, is, that this was, is the ad reno. That was the ad reno. So option four, which was adding onto and renovating the existing Hanlon was the most expensive option. And the five, the options for 560 students sort of fell somewhere in the middle. So here were the total scores on the evaluation criteria. Um, again, option seven came in the highest with 450. Amanda, yeah. Amanda, when, if you go to the back slide, yep. um, cost one. Um, just you may just want to. I'm just trying to reconcile. If you look at the top range of N, uh, net zero and timber. That adds up to, I think, 6.1 million. If you add that to 83, that adds up to 89.1. And then back in the final slide, we're, we're referencing a number of 90.3. So I'm just trying to, I don't know, that may just be, uh, these may just need to be updated. If, you know, at least if I look at this slide, it doesn't capture the number we have in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, I think these can are you just so, yeah, yeah, these are just supposed to be intended as sort of general round numbers. Um, they, the slide they're... is really just is really just for comparison purposes only between each one. There okay. are also other items, uh, uh, Tony, there uh, in addition to the net zero and timber that in uh, what's not clearly shown here is, is that there's that additional field and then there's the uh, uh, full AC versus not uh, mm -hmm. a dehumidication and then uh, right. Uh, rainwater system. So that's where sort of the um, the, the discrepancy in terms of showing uh, not show the the that's where the delta between the total amount. Okay. So the graphic is not quite correct because that those items are not shown as an independent yeah. bar okay. right now. Yeah, we yeah we we didn't include that on this cause compare those okay. those particular add-on items in this cause comparison slide. It was really just to try and show the baseline versus the net zero energy premium and the timber frame. It didn't incorporate those additional items. Okay. Yeah, I just did, I don't know what's being submitted. Just may want to footnote it because someone's gonna someone's gonna catch that. So. Yeah, I don't I think this is part of our PSR report. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, any other questions on the cost? Okay. Um, so, can you go back one slide, Rob? Oh, sorry. All right. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, looking at this, just as a reminder, option seven did come out on top. Um, but what we were interested in looking at, particularly with the consultant, the redistricting consultants renovation uh, recommendation, was really option seven versus option eleven. Um, no, sorry, option seven versus option ten. Um, these were, you know, the two highest ones. We were trying to understand sort of, uh, you know, what was the difference between them? Where were the major differences? And you can see the major differences here that put option seven on top were in education. And we're also in, um, sorry, that was it. It was just an education. So moving on to the next slide, um, th these are the two 
this is the option on the left is option seven, the recommended option. The option on the right is option 10, which is the, the same population, 560 students, but just two different designs. And as you will recall, there's the tree on the left, the E on the right, and the tree really won um, the, the, it was the preference of the educators, the principals, um, almost, I would say, unanimously, Emily, is that right? Yeah. Um, and the key difference right. between the two of them was really where the grade level teams were, how they connected to each other, um, the location of the library and media center, and again, how that connected to the rest of the building. Um, the ease with which we could separate public and private, it was on the tree, you can see it's much more of a, of a sort of a, the public space is, is sort of more of a block, and on the E, it's almost like you'd have to take the southern part of the building um, and just block that entire thing. And finally, I know there was a preference for the location of the gymnasium in the tree and its proximity to the fields. So um, that's really the main reason why the tree won out versus the E. Otherwise, I think their scores were very similar. So here we are, recommended option, option seven. This is new construction, Hanlon Deerfield Consolidation, 560 students at the Hanlon site. Um, and again, we're calling it the tree. So how did we get to the not to exceed the 90.6? Just a quick reminder, our base project cost is 83 million. Um, this is going to get us those two additional reimbursement points from the MSBA because this is designed to be 20% above the new energy code. So if we start with 83, 83 million, um, we agreed last Friday to explore fossil fuel free options, including a geothermal heat source option. That's the most expensive option out of the fossil fuel free options. So we carried that cost forward, which is 3.5 million. We also agreed to explore timber framing. Uh, this would reduce embodied carbon in the materials. And so we, uh, so we looked at the 300,000 partial, meaning just the common areas, the sort of the lobby, the main areas, and then also 2 million to timber frame the classrooms. And we decided to carry that full amount forward, 2.3 million. Again, this is just for study purposes. Um, we may or may not have any timber in the building <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, we also agreed to carry a study to see um, about, about uh, air conditioning 100% in the building instead of versus what's included in the base now is air conditioning only administrative office and, and the special education classrooms. So it would be an additional 1.3 million to do AC for the entire building. Otherwise, we would have a dehumidification system in the other portion of the building. Um, so that's 1.3. We agreed to move that forward into schematic design to study it. We agreed to move forward rainwater cistern irrigation for, for $200,000 and study that in schematic design. And finally, we agreed that we should look at adding an additional field, which would be a seven by seven soccer field. This would be in addition to the 11 v 11 soccer field that is built into the base budget cost for 300,000. So that's how we got our 90.6 million um, not to exceed number. So this is an important slide. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Um, is there any discussion on this slide? I just reiterate what I said last time around the dates and as much as we can be able to make these things, just the difference between the 23rd and the 25th, uh, August 25th and being able to make these decisions holistically. Yep, and we are going to work on that schedule. Anyone else? No, okay. So the PSR, what is, what's in it? <laughs> so this is just the, the chapters, if you will, in the PSR. Um, table of contents, introduction, the evaluation of the existing conditions, the final evaluation of the alternatives, um, number four is the preferred solution, that's option seven. Five are the local actions and approvals that are necessary, and six is just the exhibits. Um, so that's the structure of the PSR. And our next steps. So as I mentioned, we 
oh, I guess this is June. So this is, all right, so July will be submitting the PSR. Um, and we are hoping for approval from the MSBA on the PSR in August. That's their board meeting. Um, June through August, Doran Whittier is going to be conducting a fair number of educational programming sessions with faculty and staff. And we are very appreciative to the faculty and staff for giving us this time this summer. I know it's not ideal to have to do this during the summer, but um, our timeline is such that we can't push it to the fall. I did ask for the record, I asked. Um, so they're gonna be, we're gonna be working with them this summer and with Emily and her team to really flush out the design more with the educators. On July 8th, the Sustainability Subcommittee will be meeting. Um, they'll be meeting again on August 18th, and that's to explore these issues of timber framing, of fossil fuel heat, um, and the rainwater, and, and discuss these, really get into them, and present back to the SBC the, the findings. On July 23rd, the School Building Committee we are going to kick off schematic design. That sounds very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the week of August 3rd, we are going to be doing school tours strictly to look at ventilation and cooling systems. So this is goes to the question of whether or not we want to do 100% AC in the entire building. Um, we didn't think it made sense to make this decision in a vacuum. We want to go see schools that have dehumidification systems, and we wanted to see them in August, where hopefully it will be very hot that week. So if, if anybody's interested in joining, let me know. Um, we'll, I, I don't think, Rob, there's any issue with bringing as many people as we want. So if anybody wants to go towards some dehumidifi dehumidified schools, <laughs> let me know. Um, August 18th, as I mentioned, the Sustainability Subcommittee will be meeting again to, to talk about really the the fossil fuel free options and the, um, the remaining items of sustainability. And on August 25th, we are back here for another school building committee um, where I think we're going to vote on a number of these sustainability, uh, make these sustainability decisions. So those are the next steps for this committee. Are there any questions? Nope. Okay. Um, I think that's the PSR presentation. So discussion time. We've got our recommended option, option seven. We've got our 90.6 million not to exceed number. Um, anyone want to raise anything? This is literally your last chance. No. What's the question? What's just procedure? What does the PSR actually look like? Is it now go... Does the team work on a you know 50 page document? I mean, what does that actually literally look like? It's it's more like a 500 page document. 500 page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, we've got a draft in, and uh, we're going to continue to work on it uh, between now and, and July 8th. Um, but yeah, that'll be it'll it's a binder, you know, a thick binder of. Um, narrative basically explaining the whole process that we've been through um, in this phase and the reasoning behind the decisions that have been made, the evaluation process, um, you know, just kind of talking through why the other alternatives have not, you know, were not selected, why this particular option was preferred, um, you know, how each option um, satisfies the different criteria on the evaluation criteria, how the evaluation criteria was developed. It's, just, you know, it's very detailed in terms of what the MSBA is looking for to make sure that you went through a thorough and objective process. Oh, yeah. And to give you a sense, Tony, this was the, um, I'm going to try and hold it up here. This was the PDP that we submitted. So this is sort of similar to what it will look like. If you want a copy, we can send you one. Uh, electronic, we should be mimicking our green initiative. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if the we, MSBA will let us do that. MSBA requires a hard copy, one hard copy sent over to them. Of course, with official signatures, right? Yes. And, and then that, that's, that's what, yeah, there's also that to collect. And when would we expect for this to be hopefully approved? And what does that mean if they approve it? Um, so, the, so the process is that there will be a uh, 
the uh, the district will meet with uh, there will be a meeting called so the facility assessment subcommittee meeting, and then that's the that's in that meeting all the uh, MSBA will ask you all the questions that they want to ask, and you will get a good sense of whether they uh, this is uh, they will recommend uh, to move forward or not in that meeting, uh, and if everything goes uh, according to plan then that would, recommendation will be put, put forward to the full MSBA board on August 26th. And officially that will be the vote to move into schematic design. And is that MSBA commitment to funding or? No, no, okay. the MSBA, uh, so you move into the schematic design phase, which we you would uh, then Develop the plan and then uh, and establish a very detailed budget estimate, and then you would in that budget estimate you would also include furniture, equipment, technology, everything that will go into this project, and that is referred to as a project funding agreement, and that and that will be the time that MSBA determines how what is the mat what they refer to as the maximum grant uh, for the project. Uh, and that if when that gets approved, that will fix the that is the commitment because then the town would enter into an agreement with MSBA with that understanding of the uh, maximum amount of grant uh, allowed for this particular project. We expect that submission to be uh, beginning of 2021 for the uh, MSBA board vote of uh, February 2021. And then after that, the uh, then the, we'll follow up with the town meeting and the town ballot vote in uh, spring of 2021. All right. Any other questions? Does everyone like option seven? We <laughs> love it. <laughs> we we love it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess just a general question. I mean, this is all a process and moving forward. I, I guess I'd ask um, the design team. I suppose if you could to comment on, you know, are, do you think we're in a good place with all the decisions made and with the option that's been submitted um, from from your perspective? You mean in terms of MSBA approval or just uh, generally? Well, in terms of where we are with the project solution and the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, from our perspective, you know, you guys have gone through a very thorough process of evaluating each of the different options that are out there. I mean, the, the three different enrollment uh, scenarios, the two different sites, the renovations that versus renovations and additions and new construction the extremely thorough evaluation uh, criteria and process that you went through with you know, formal subcommittees created to evaluate the sustainability and the evaluation process. It's a, it's a very um, thorough process. And um, uh, I think this will look, uh, that the MSBA will look at it uh, very, um, you know, positively in the process that we went through. I don't know, Don, if you wanted to add on. Yeah, if, if, if I could, to piggyback on what Rob said, the participation in this process has been outstanding at, at all levels. And we were able to develop some options, uh, many of which could meet your needs from an educational point of view. But we do believe that this option seven is a step above any of the other things, uh, options that we developed in meeting those educational needs that have been uh, described to us. So uh, we're just thrilled that you're going with this direction because we have, uh, we have some interesting ideas in how to uh, push this moving forward uh, architecturally in a cost-effective manner. Great, thanks for those comments. All right, anyone else? Any other thoughts? No, I mean, again, I'm fine with it. I think, I know you guys are gonna have some conversations around understanding the cost 
vis-a-vis -vis some other projects. I know we had some back and forth on that, Maya, but um, I just think the, you know, the overall number for an elementary school is, you know, I think it's a little, I mean, it may be not out of the range, but it seems higher than I think some of us initially thought, at least me, I can only speak for myself. So I think just understanding that, um, you know, continuing to understand that would be helpful. Not, and that's not for the, you know, the next, for this thing, but just in general. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Any last comments? Nope. Okay. All right. So I am moving to action items. Um, so the first one is the vote to submit the PSR. I actually have language for the vote. So I am asking for a motion for the school guilt building committee to authorize the owner's project manager representing the town of Westwood to submit to the MSBA the preferred schematic report or the PSR with the enrollment option of consolidation of Hanlon, Deerfield, and Deerfield at 560 students, and option seven with the additional sustainable design options and the site field option to be studied further during the schematic design phase with the total project budget not to exceed $90.6 million. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, I'm gonna do a roll call. Ken Aries? Yes. Brian Baer? Yes. Allison? Yes. Chris Coleman? Yes. Sarah Cronin? Yes. I don't I don't think John Cummings joined us. Charlie? Yes. Pam? Yes. Abby? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Josepha? Oh, Josepha had to drop. Um, Carol? Yes. Tony? Oh, Michelle yes. is not here. Tony? Yes. yes. Emily? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Kate? Yes. And Maya is a yes. It is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Lots of hard work there. Two years in the making. We did it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Nice job, Maya. Um, great. All right, now we've got a little procedural stuff. Um, we need to vote to approve an amendment to the contract with Doran Whittier for the proposed geothermal test well that we discussed earlier. This is the amount not to exceed $62,700. Can I get a motion for that? So moved. Second. Great, roll call. Ken? Yes. Brian? Yes. Allison? Yes. Chris? Yes. Sarah? Yes. John Cummings isn't here. Charlie? Yes. Pam? Yes. Abby? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Carol? Yes. Joseph is not here. Michelle's not here. Tony? Yes. Emily? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Kate? Yes. And Maya is a yes. It's unanimous. And finally, um, I need a vote to approve our meeting minutes from June 12th, 2020. Can I get a motion? So moved. Motion. <clears throat> Can I get a second? Second. Second. Okay, roll call. Oh, any discussion? No, roll call. Ken? Yep. Brian? Yes. Allison? Yes. Chris? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John isn't here. Pam? I'm going to abstain. I was not at the meeting. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Abby? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Joseph is not here. Carol? Yes. Michelle's not here. Tony? Yes. Emily? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Kate? Yes. And Maya is a yes, so it's unanimous. Um, finally, is there any new business? Maya, I just have a question mm -hmm. for our design team. Uh, when we began this process, it was a very different environment 
and how might today's environment affect the MSBA with regard to the decision making process? You know, are they are they likely to be uh, ask people to go back and rewrite things or change them, or it's a, uh, uh, it's just how might we expect any different than we might have expected say three years ago? I don't think um, don't think there's any difference, Charlie, in terms of um, the MSBA review process for this. We'll get the same fairly voluminous list of comments from them, and, and um, you know we'll have to get back to them on a bunch of. This will happens on every project, on every submission. We get back to them on a whole bunch of different questions they have. They go through a. They send, I think they actually send this one out to a peer review. So they, there's a whole process around that, but that's been happening for years. So, uh, I mean, from, since the start of the MSBA. So I don't think that just being in this pandemic environment um, is going to change it. They may ask some questions about around, you know, as we move into SD, we probably will need to address what we're doing around um, HVAC and some of those just, you know, planning around a future pandemic of some sort, what, what how we're addressing it. Which I'm sure everyone's talking about that now, anyway. So um, that's what I would say is, you know, I don't think there's any other big issues going to come out of it from from given the environment we're in. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Any other new business? Nope. Okay. Um, then I just need a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? second. second. All right, ro roll call. Any discussion about adjourning? No. Okay. <laughs> Ken. Yes. Brian. Yes. Allison. Yes. Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John's not here. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Jeff is not here. Carol. Yes. Michelle's not here. Tony. Yep. Emily. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Kate. Yes. And May is a yes. We are unanimously adjourned.